Hello everybody, this is Bill Gibbons, Crypto Hunter. Just thought I'd go for a quick spin before we start off with this promised video on how to join one of our expeditions. In this case, we will focus on Africa. Now, I'd like to say thank you so much for all of your votes and your thumbs up and your subscriptions. It's been very encouraging, particularly those who say that I should be narrating my own videos anyway. So thank you again for the encouragement. It is deeply, deeply appreciated. Now, let's get on with this uh, presentation and start by looking at an area where our research is currently focused. The Jar River also known as the Ngoko River, forms part of the Cameroon and Congo Republic border and is about 450 miles long. Two other rivers of interest is the Bumba River, which is almost as long, and the larger Sanga River, which is a tributary of the mighty Congo and is 490 miles in length. The Sangha also runs along the border with the Republic of the Congo and Cameroon. And in southern Cameroon, it's connected to the Bumba River. All three rivers are linked, which is why we have Mokele and Bambi observations in all of them. Now, this map shows the three rivers in relation to one another and gives you an idea on the vastness of this area and the fact that a rare semi-aquatic animal like the Mokele and Bembe, has plenty of space and countless hiding places to move around in. As you can see, we have the Sanga River here and the Jar River here. However, for now, our focus must be on the Jar, where one particular location, remote and tranquil, has proven to be a magnet for unidentified animals. Now, in this location, we found several footprints of unidentified animals uh, that French zoologists cannot identify. But, first things first. To prepare for a visit to Cameroon, you must ensure that your passport is up to date and has plenty of pages. African officials love their big, important looking stamps, as you can see here. It's actually quite fun to have a stamp like this in your passport. Now, you can apply for your tourist visa at the Cameroon Embassy in Washington, D.C., as you can see here, if you're in the USA, or in Ottawa, if you are in Canada. They're two very nice-looking buildings, I must say. But just Google their locations or give them a call, and they will email you the appropriate documents to fill out. Now, secondly, Certain inoculations are essential. Courses or boosters usually advised are diphtheria, hepatitis A, tetanus, yellow fever, and other vaccines would be cholera, hepatitis B, meningitis, rabies, and typhoid. A yellow fever certificate for all travelers over nine months of age is absolutely required. I don't think we'll have anybody that young going on the expedition. However, you won't need them all. The main two are yellow fever, which is essential, and cholera. If you already have these, then get boosters. I would recommend hepatitis A and B, and also malaria pills, but uh, talk to your doctor about those first. Now, thirdly, Flying from Canada or the USA to Cameroon can be an adventure in itself. Before, I flew from Paris to Yaoundé on Air France, but with the security situation there, it um, seemed to be a little dicey for a time, but now things seem to be pretty good. I used to fly by Swiss Air, which was, in my opinion, a much better airline. Now, Swiss Air no longer flies to Yaoundé, so I switched to Brussels Airlines, by the way, which is a great airline to fly and excellent service. So from Canada or the USA, my recommendation is fly to Brussels and from there we connect to Yaoundé, which is 8 hours and 35 minutes. Alternatively, we can all fly from Paris to Yaoundé, but we will work this out closer to our departure from civilization. As far as I know, one American airline does fly to Yaoundé, and that's United Airlines. But please check first. Mm -hmm. 
Now, we will be met at the airport and taken to our hotel. We will all be staying at the Hotel de Valley, which you can see here, which is very nice and also quite new. All team members will be staying here, as the security is much better than other places I've stayed in in the past. If we have time, we will most likely do a little shopping in Yaoundé prior to hitting the road. It's important that we stay in a group wherever we go. If you are part of our expedition, we will have experienced Westerners like myself and Michel Ballot to stick with. Our Cameroonian partners will also be on hand to make sure we don't run into any unsavory characters. Now thirdly is clothing. Now my recommendation is, when in Yaoundé or any of the towns, is to dress down. Wear modest clothing such as shirts, pants, jeans and sneakers or sandals. I cannot emphasize this enough. Do not wear expensive looking clothing, flashy jewelry or watches that look expensive. Cameroonians are not wealthy people, but they regard most Westerners as rich or at least financially affluent. So do not give any impression that you are better off than you really are. Always watch your purse, wallet and any cameras or cell phones. I always take a travel wallet like this, which can be worn under your clothing. I also take along some Ziploc bags like this. You can keep your passport and essential documents and money inside the Ziploc bag and inside your travel wallet, which is of course worn under your clothing. That way everything is kept dry and clean. Now female members of the team should also consider one of these and keep all bags and purses close and touching your body so that you can feel if someone is rubbing up against you or touching anything that belongs to you. Whether you're white, Asian or East Indian, you will stand out. Even if you are an African American, they will know that you are different. So it's just a question of uh, being aware of your surroundings and just practicing good old common sense. Now fourth, now for the equipment. Now I will be taking a sonar unit like this, regular binoculars, night vision binoculars and an underwater fish camera. I'll also be taking two cameras. Now one is a camcorder and the other is an SLR. They're both Sony's. Both can take still photos and video footage. A lightweight tripod is recommended, but a camera stick will do. I will also have my cell phone and a couple of GoPro cameras to mount on the boat at the front and the back when we are on the river. I will also take some game trail cameras to place at specific locations where the footprints of at least three unidentified animals have been found frequently and recently. I'll also take 10 waterproof disposable cameras like these. Now these are for the local fishermen and hunters that we've come to know personally. If they can get photos of anything significant for us, then we will arrange for a financial reward. And when I say we, that means me and Michel Ballo. Now this is a water lily. It is a very effective wind and water driven charger for most small electronic devices when you are off the grid. Now you don't have to take expensive equipment with you. You can take a small compact camera like this, which takes excellent photographs, especially if it's digital. Also, if you want to take binoculars, take a compact pair like this. They are just as good as anything else in the bush. Some people just prefer to take their cell phones. And most cell phones today, whether it's an iPhone or an Android, have excellent built-in cameras. So I'll leave it up to you. Now, secondly, a note on food and drink. Although we'll be buying most of our supplies in the city, I always like to take a few extra items. Now these range from trail mix, granola bars, and small sachets of flavored coffee and tea. I also like to take along some stevia, as I've cut a lot of sugar out of my diet. But feel free to bring your own preferences. It's always good to have your own little personal supplies with you. Now, while we are on the road, we will be traveling in 4x4 vehicles. 
we will most likely be buying a few extra supplies before we leave, so we will have plenty of water for the road trip. Now, a word of caution here, the roads are uneven and at times very rough, so wear clothes that you don't mind getting grubby. The famous red dust of West Africa will get in everywhere, so guard your electronics and other items that might be affected. One other item I would recommend that you bring would be these paper face masks, because if there's a lot of dust being kept up, kicked up, uh, you don't want to breathe that stuff in. So have a face mask with you and ready when you need it. Our last stop before traveling upriver will be Malundu. This is regarded as a border town, as it is only two miles south to the Republic of the Congo. We will actually see the Congo from the river, and if we are lucky, we can step ashore on the Congo side, somewhere very quiet, to grab a colorful stone or pebble as a memento of your trip. Our final rest stop will be at the World Wildlife Camp in Ndongu, where we will stay for one night. The following day, we'll head up river and we will camp at Crocodile Island. At Ndongu, we'll be met and joined by two village elders who are very knowledgeable concerning Mokeli and Bembe and other mystery animals of this region. And they will be joining us for the trip. I have a lot of questions to ask them. Now, this is where the expedition gets interesting. This is a very remote area and ideal for placing our game cameras in specific locations. Of particular importance is the fact that we must be as quiet as possible when exploring this area. There's lots of small branch streams off the Jar where Mokele and Bembe's have been observed. Also other strange animals who leave their footprints there, so we'll be exploring the river, the streams, the swamp and part of the surrounding forest. Very few Westerners have been there, so uh, this will be quite a unique adventure for you. So once again, here is a breakdown of our itinerary. At day one, Yaoundi, we will spend our first night in the Hotel de Valley, which as you can see is new, modern and clean, and is located just outside Yaoundi. Day two, our second stop on the road will be at a small hotel in Baturi. This is kind of by the middle of the country, and this is where things get pretty basic. On day three, we will reach the border town of Malundu, where we will sleep at a Catholic mission. We'll stop in a small place for lunch, as you can see here. We will be heading upriver from Malundu to the World Wildlife Camp at Ndongu in a very large twin-engine canoe like this one. Now at Ndongu, the village elders will make an offering to the river for our success. And they will be coming with us on the trip as they are expert animal trackers. Personally, as a Christian, I put my faith in the living God, but let them do their thing and we'll just go from there. Now, day five, we are off upriver from Ndongu, and we'll be camping down at a place called Sholé or Sholet Island. As you can see here, it's very large, very sandy, and if we're lucky, we might even find some strange footprints in the ground there. By the way, I will be bringing some plaster of Paris to make casts of certain animal prints. Now, day six, we arrive at Crocodile Island, and we'll make our week-long camp there. Now the village elders and the Baka will scout out the area for us. We will explore the immediate area, put up our game cameras, and hopefully we might be able to play some hippo vocalizations in the water to see if we can draw in a Mokele and Bembe to the area. Just make sure you have your cameras ready. Now day 4 to day 12, we stay on this island. But we'll explore the whole area, and we'll explore the river, the swamp, the smaller streams, and the surrounding forest. Then we head back to Ndongo on day 13, drifting quietly down the river. We're going to be using our sonar and our fish camera to see if we can spot anything underwater. Day 14, we will stay in Ndongo to interview eyewitnesses on Mokele and Bembe. They'll be coming in from other villages to give us information. 
So um, that'll be worth doing when we get back to Ndongo. I will also be asking them about the Yoli, that's a strange ape-like creature that lives in the forest, as well as the Ngubu, the elephant killer, and the giant spider. In fact, before we leave Ndongo, I'm going to ask the village elders if they can send out a few hunters and if they can find and kill the giant spider, which is called Jabafofi, which means giant spider. Uh, then I will prepare or try and get a financial reward to pay them to bring us in a very large spider. Needless to say, they'll have to kill it first because spiders are not my favorite things. But let's keep our fingers crossed. Now, day 15, it's Ndongu to Malundu. And then day 16, Malundu to Batori. And then Batori to back to the same hotel at Yaoundé. The Hotel de Valley, where we can rest up a little bit, get cleaned up, do some laundry, and get ready for our trip home. Now, on day 18, we can go to Imbalamayo. Sorry, that's Imbalmayo. And that is a center for gorillas. You can go there, it's kind of like a little park, and you can get up close and personal with some Western Lowland gorillas or make great photographs. Uh, but if you don't want to do that, then maybe we can spend a day extra in the field. But I assure you, um, between <laughs> going from day 4 to day 12 in the middle of the Jar River in an uninhabited region is a long time, I promise you. But maybe, who knows, we might uh, get a breakthrough and make some history. So that's it, folks. Day 19, we're back at the airport and home. Now keep some money for the airport tax, that's about 10,000 CFA, or Central French African Francs. Uh, and, but I'll explain more of that when we get to the money. Now let's talk about clothing and the sort of things that you should be taking with you as personal kit. Now first of all, I don't know if you wear a watch. I do, I wear a wristwatch all the time, I guess because I'm old fashioned. Most people tend to carry cell phones that has dates and time and everything else on them. I use a Coleman's watch like this. It's a very simple Coleman's camping watch. Um, it doesn't cost very much. You can buy them in Walmart for 20 or $30. And some of them have a luminous face, so you can look at it at night time. If you need to know what the time is at 3 or 4 o'clock in the morning for some reason, but um, that's the kind of watch I take with me. And at the end of the trip, I usually just give it away to someone. So um, don't wear anything flashy or shiny that might look expensive. The other thing I like to take with me is a broad hat. Now, I don't know about you, but I burn easily in hot sun. So I always take a hat with me. Now, if you're cool with sun and you like to get a suntan, then you can wear a ball cap or not wear anything at all. But for those of you like me who are a little sensitive to the sun, then wear a broad hat that will protect your face and neck. Also take plenty of sun cream to protect your skin. That is essential if you don't want to get sunburned. And I've gotten sunburned once too often. Now, as far as what you're going to wear is concerned, one of the most essential items you can take is a poncho like this. A rain poncho is essential because sometimes we get unpredictable rainstorms even at the end of the wet season. So take a poncho with you, uh, they uh, will keep you nice and dry and it means you don't have to try and find another set of clothing to wear if you get soaked through. As for footwear, you might see in some of the videos that people are wearing gum boots or, or rubber boots. I find them a little awkward. I prefer to wear stuff like this, like a nice um, sturdy pair of walking or hiking shoes um, that when they get wet, you can easily dry them out by the campfire. So again, uh, get a couple of pairs of these. If you're in the town or at the hotel, you can wear sandals like this. It's always better not to have your bare feet on the ground or even by the river. Always have something on your feet to protect you. As far as short sleeve and long sleeve shirts are concerned, I like to wear these. Now these are khaki or dark green. They are essential because they're darker colored, they're not bright, that you won't stand out in the bush, and of course it blends in much better with the background. Again, you'll, you'll see people wearing brightly colored shirts and t-shirts, but I don't recommend that, especially in the bush. 
if you um, are determined to get a photograph of a rare, unknown or shy animal, then you have to blend in with the background so you're not standing out. Now I like to wear one of these. It's basically a fishing waistcoat, um, but it's useful for putting all my little bits and pieces in when I'm walking around. So I don't have too much stuff to carry on my belt or in my pockets. So one of these is pretty useful if you want to wear it. As for pants or trousers, um, again, you can get these cargo pants, you can get lightweight ones, you can uh, get the ones that cut off at the knees with a zipper, so you can have shorts as well as long pants to wear. They are, again, very useful to have in Africa. And also here, um, these dark colored or khaki green shirts, t-shirts, um, are good for the bush. Now the safari belt you can see here is a very good duty belt. You can attach stuff to them. You know, you can carry flashlights and you can have a little bag attached to it. You can carry stuff in. They're very, again, very helpful to have. Again, I usually get a cheap one so I can give them away at the end. Also, um, wear a jacket like this. Uh, it can get a little chilly at night in the forest or even by the river. So have something that you can put over yourself at night in your sleeping bag to keep you warm if it does get a little chilly. Now, one of the things that I've always taken with me is this. It's a hat with a net. Um, because sometimes you'll get bothered by tetsy flies, sweat bees, and so on. So here's a, a, a little tip. Take uh, some insect spray like this stuff off, like DEET or, or the DEET Woods um, anti-mosquito, anti-insect stuff. What I like to do with this, I spray it on my clothes before we go into the bush. Also, I spray it on my net hat. So that way, you, your head, your neck, eyes, everything is fully protected and insects can't go crawling all over your face. Do not wear anything like this, like a chest rake. Now, you're not a commando, we're not special forces, we're not going in there to hunt down poachers, uh, thankfully. Uh, you know, so don't wear anything like this, and please don't end up looking like this. You know, people will think you're a mercenary or something, and uh, we don't want to draw unnecessary attention to ourselves, and we certainly don't want people to get the wrong impression. We're just there as tourists to go upriver and admire the beautiful scenery. That's all people need to know apart from our present group. Now, we talked about equipment and cameras before, but one of the things you should take with you um, is a knife, and a certain fork, spoon kit. You can see this one here, it's very compact. Very good uh, if you wanna keep your own knife, fork, spoon for eating your, your dinner and your lunch. Also, uh, a mug, a bowl, and a plate. Again, you can get these plastic and lightweight so they don't weigh very much in your suitcase. So take those with you. And so you have your own cutlery and your own plates and your own cup to eat and drink from. And I would recommend that. Now, as far as a first aid kit is concerned, um, you see this first aid kit, it's got some basic stuff in it. I would add things to that. I would add Tums for stomach upsets, uh, Visine for or eye drops. Um, also get some those those rubber gloves you can see here, the nitro gloves. They're very good if you need to put a band-aid or something on yourself or on somebody else for that matter or, or spray down a burn. Uh, it's always good to have um, something to cover your hands with in the event uh, that you are, um, you might be exposed to a cut or, or a, an ulcer or something like that. You'll need your safari water bottle. It doesn't matter if it's plastic or metal. I recommend plastic. Um, I will personally be bringing a Ketodyne water filter with me. You don't need to bring one if I'm bringing one. These are excellent to have. I can put them in a river, in a swamp, anywhere you like, and pump out clean, fresh, safe drinking water. One of these will filter the water down to two microns. That's absolutely tiny. And of course, you know, it's fresh water to drink. Um, and again, you can boil the water afterwards if you so desire. Okay, so just bear that in mind. So I'll bring that with me. You don't have to worry. As far as uh, the first aid kit is concerned, Q-tips, Rexel, burn spray, um, bring some Tylenol or, or any powerful um, painkiller. 
and also perhaps um, a little clove oil for toothaches. And with the clove oil, you need to bring a couple of those little Q-tips with you. But check with your dentist before you go. That way uh, you uh, will make sure that you're not going to have a toothache in the middle of the jungle because that is not recommended. So um, this is base the basic stuff you should take. Now, you don't need to go to a camping store or any high-end place to buy clothing items like this because you can get this stuff, almost all of it, in fact, from Walmart. Uh, and so go to Walmart when they're having their summer sales or whatever. You know they have those big yellow signs uh, when they're trying to get rid of stuff uh, in order to bring in new stock. So go to Walmart and just buy most of these items cheaply. So, but again, if you if you need some advice on this, if you need to know what you need to buy, then just email me at mokaleyhunter.com and I will send you or email you a document with all the information and pictures that you need. So bear that in mind. Now, as far as other bits and pieces are concerned, uh, I don't think you need to bring a tent. Michelle below is bringing lots of tents. If you prefer your own space, bring a small lightweight tent like this. I bought one of these from Walmart for 30 bucks, and they don't weigh that much, so you can bring it with you if you want your own tent. Also bring um, a little inflatable sleeping mattress and a sleeping bag. If you want to bring a pillow, bring a pillow. Um, you know, you, you can get fairly comfortable in the forest, you would be surprised. Also, I would recommend a shower bag like this. What we do is we fill it up with a river water, hang it from a tree, the sunshine will warm up the water inside. And that means that you'll be able to have a shower when you come back. Now make sure you're wearing something when you have your shower. I don't have to emphasize that enough. So um, that's the best advice I can give you for little bits and pieces of items to bring with you, including your clothing. You need to bring, I'd say, a minimum of three changes of clothing with you while you are in the bush. A minimum of three. Um, you need to keep uh, your traveling clothes clean so you can leave those in your suitcase at the hotel it will be kept under lock and key uh, so that when you get back to the hotel um, if you're not going to give away your bush clothes after you've worn them uh, then uh, you can just wash them out and dry them at the hotel and have your a clean pair of traveling clothes to go home in so that's my recommendation as far, before I forget, as a backpack is concerned, um, backpacks are pretty useful things to have. Uh, you can take a backpack or a large hockey bag, put all your stuff in there, throw it in the boat, and up the river we go. And that's all you're going to need for the trip. So maybe a backpack and another large bag to keep extra stuff in, like clothing and footwear, and off we go. Now, individual prices. At the hotel in Yaoundé, it's $37.50 a night. Um, you can pay in the American dollars, euros, or the local currency. I suggest the local currency. Now, that's at night. One, that's $37.50 a night per person, including breakfast. Baturi will be the same price again, $37.50 a night, but I think we do go to a small cafe for breakfast there. Balundu will be $18.63 per person per night. And I think the same thing there, we'll either eat our own food in the kitchen there or we will find a small cafe. Now between Yaoundi and Baturi, we will stop at a place called Eos or Ayos, as you can see here. Lunch here will cost about $24. I'm not sure why it's so expensive unless they've got this expensive Cordon Bleu French restaurant hidden away somewhere. And our 4x4 transportation starts from Yondi and takes us all the way to Malundu will cost, wait for it, and this includes everything, 4,470 US dollars for everyone. The round trip on the river for 10 days will be 100 euros per person per day. Now, let's go down a little bit more for 13 days from Malundu to Malundu, which is a round trip. Blaze and Noel are our Pirog guides and owners, and we will have to pay them 70 euros per day for 13 days. That's 910 euros. Blaze is a forest tracker, so we pay him 50 euros a day for 10 days. That's 500 euros. Sovereign or Severine, who is a pygmy driver, a pirogue driver, 
I should get that right. Pierogi's canoe, by the way. Uh, that's 40 euros per day for 10 days or 400 euros. Joseph, who is a police officer, who will be armed and come with us for our safety. He is 50 euros a day for 13 days at 650 euros. Eve, who is our eco guard for our security, is 40 euros a day for 10 days and that's 400 euros. Some police, who is a cook, is 40 euros a day for 10 days at 400 euros. Other costs will include government papers that will allow us to visit the Upper Jar River to explore the river, the forests and the swamps. So in total, you will need 3,928.75 euros or $4,879.90 US. Now remember, this does not include your airline ticket. However, I've done a bit of research online and you can buy your airline ticket for any major US or Canadian airport for between $1,700 to $2,000 plus. But please avoid buying standby tickets if you can avoid these because they may result in you waiting for long periods at airports to get on a flight. The total amount per average for each person is around 7,000 US dollars or slightly less and that is per person. Yes, I know this is expensive, but on this trip we will spend more time in the target area with two fully armed protection officers and two highly experienced animal trackers, plus a cook and two boatmen who know every inch of the river. If this amount is out of your reach, and it is for a lot of people, then we can get a crowdfunding project going. If you need a document outlining our itinerary and costs, then email me at mokaleyhunter at gmail.com and I will be happy to send you a copy. Oh, and before I forget, the next video will be on the giant Congo spider, including other giant spider reports from around the world. So thanks again for watching, and we'll see you again soon. Until then, take care, and leave your comments below, and if you haven't subscribed, please do so. It all helps. Until then, take care. We'll see you again soon.